Hello, my name is Sandra Lee. Thank you so much for joining us for this Quantum Alignment Show. Um, I've been a human design specialist with Karen for six years now. And I have really appreciated just this past year um, interacting more with Karen's other students and specialists and doing quantum alignment. And I have been finding that I personally have grown a lot just by this interaction that I've had with other people um, and doing quantum alignment and looking more deeply at the fifth line and coming to really understand the fifth line experience in a whole different way recently. So I really appreciate Gayla for um, doing this with me so that we can help other people learn how to experience the fifth line in a way that is a little easier for us and maybe even a little more fun. So I'm Sandra Lee and thank you for joining us. Gayla? Hey, I'm, I'm Gayla Baker, and I have been with Karen as a human design specialist, and I'm a, also a quantum align practitioner for about um, three years now, and well, coming up on three years. And when I first learned about being a 5-1, that made everything that had happened to me up to that point make sense. It, it just explained so much of what I'd gone through, and I... I have decided that I uh, want to help other people with, um, you know, the whole concept of the, all the pain that has come up around being a fifth line, because I now see it as a more of a blessing than a, than a curse. So, hit for you, Sandra. <laughs> Thanks, Akela. Um, so, we're doing this so that you all can start to understand being a fifth line person more, or if you are not a fifth line person yourself and you have fifth line people in your lives to help you be able to understand their experience and interacting with them in another way. So um, there are four different profiles in human design that have the fifth line. We're not gonna go into detail about them now, but just so you know, there are these four different kinds. There's three fives and I'm a three five. There's two fives, five ones. I'm a five one. Kayla's okay, a five one, and then there's five twos. So when we have the workshop in a couple of weeks, we're going to go into more detail about how they experience the fifth line differently. And just like in the past couple of days, Gail and I have been talking a lot and preparing for this um, quantum alignment show, and we are starting ourselves to really see how different the different profiles experience it. So I think we're both excited um, to help all of you understand those differences. Want to talk a little bit about the projection field, Gayla? Yeah, um, the projection field. You'll notice that uh, the picture that I had uh, on, the, when, on the start page was uh, standing behind the clouded glass. That was the first thing I learned about the projection field is that no one really truly sees us for who we are. They're looking through some filter, this projection field. And this projection field is um, there for a purpose. The purpose is to help other people find, uh, find a way to, to heal what they need to heal within themselves. Uh, and it's a little bit different for the different um, particular profiles. But uh, this projection field is a way that we mirror back to people what they need, need, what they need to heal themselves or what they're looking for. We don't always know what this is. And that's what's con so confusing when people uh, project sometimes emotions onto the projection field, uh, thinking that we feel something we don't. Uh, it gets very confusing. But uh, I'm going to let you take over a little bit there. A lot of what I see when it comes to the projection field is this whole experience of not being seen for who I am and for other people not being seen as who they are. And when I do readings for people, one of the most common things that I say that has people is like, oh yeah, that happens all the time, is this part about the projection field and not being understood, not being seen. And I also find that a big experience is being misunderstood, 
misinterpreted, having people get offended when I do or say things that are just like not what I intended. That's not the experience I wanted them to have. So just understanding this projection field is like this, like the in, in the image that Gayla found for us of that, that glass. You see through that, that fuzzy haziness. And so to recognize that people experience us as people with the projection field as having that haziness around us and that they can't really see it, see us for who we are. I think it's not possible for them to really see us for who we are. And that's the projection field going to play. Um, I, I'd like to share how um, something that I have found to be true for me is that whenever I first learned of that, I, I felt so totally isolated, just cut off from the world that I could never fit in. I mean, I had a little bit of profile jealousy of, of the fourth lines and how they could just be so cozy in, in such networks. And, and that just was never going to be me, no matter how much I wanted it. And then in, it made me look at other relationships in my life. Like, uh, if no one can see me who, for who I truly am, then how can I be in this long-term happy marriage? I've got 37 years with, with uh, my husband, and, and he doesn't see me for who I am. So it really made me doubt all of my interactions with all of my relationships until I came to a point that, that I believe that there's a rest time for being in the projection field for different profiles. Uh, perhaps maybe as Rob points out, the 5-2 the is in constantly in a projection field. And we'll go into that later in the workshop, but that we can step away from the projection field. And that has a lot to do with why we like to hide so much, that we kind of get a break from people projecting onto us. But I, I really got caught up into thinking, well, how can my lo husband love me who, and if he not be able to see me for who I am? And then I, I just had to decide that whoever the heck he sees, he's fine with, and that's good enough for me. I know that because I've always had the projection field, it's just part of, it's just part of who I am and people are gonna have that consistent of experience of me. And um, I know that understanding or learning about the projection field, the existence of the projection field, and like Gayla said, having that explain so many of the challenging experiences I've had in life, for me, understanding about that helps me be peaceful about it. So it's like, just like anything in human design, there are lots of things that have the potential to be challenging, difficult, things I don't understand or that confuse me or that make me upset. And when I recognize that it's part of the definition in my chart, it helps me see that there's nothing wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with anybody else, I didn't do anything wrong and nobody else did anything wrong. And I can't turn it off. Right? So it's like understanding that about the projection field or about the other things in human design enables me to become peaceful about it, accept it, like accept the fact that I'm a fifth line and I have this projection field, and then I learn to manage it. Right? So it's like I find ways to work with myself and the people in my life with the understanding that the projection field is part of it. And so, um, you know, we'll give you a few practical strategies for working with projection field now, and then we'll talk about that more in the workshop. But for me, one of the practical strategies is just knowing that the projection field is there and taking account of that when I see people interacting with me. It's like, oh, there's a projection field thing. So what do I have to do to help myself with this relationship, given that the projection field is uh, acting up, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Sandra, you really have it right when you talk about managing the um, projection field, managing being the fifth line. Uh, you know, we have to make friends with our fifth line uh, the way that is best for us, and that is managing it. And right, what you said is we're not broken. 
They're not broken. This is the way it's supposed to work. Uh, let's just get ourselves out of the way. It, and a lot, a part of that is not taking things personally. Um, in my experience, a lot of the, when I was in the wrong projection field, I ended up experiencing a lot of painful issues of, of, um, of ways that, that I took everything to heart. And when I'm able to realize that's the projection field, they have projected onto me some expectations and I was not supposed to or didn't fulfill them, that's their problem. It's not my problem. And it was not my issue to deal with. So it's not personal. And I've had people say, you know, it's not personal. Well, it feels personal. And understanding the fifth line and understanding the rejection field is a way to step back and help me to not take things personally. You just said something that I want you to clarify a little bit. You just said about the wrong projection field. Would you share with people a little bit more about what that is? Since we can't turn this off, people will project onto us whatever they need at the time. And sometimes, in my experience, I've had people just dislike me on site, just come up and, whoa, I didn't do anything to them. And, um, you know, I need to say, did I have a deodorant on this morning or something? And um, I, I really took it personally that I'm not a person that, that somebody would like on first sight. And that, until I realized that when I mirror back to them what they're seeing that they need to heal about themselves, and it's not the right time for them to face this, then, then they have a pushback. And that is not my uh, doing. I didn't do anything. So that is uh, the wrong projection field. When, you're, when people expect you to be the savior or to find the answers or to lead them out of the trouble as the five ones and, and the three fives and the five twos, or they're all designed to do this. If it's not the right time or they're not approaching it in the right strategy, um, it's the wrong projection field, and therefore, that's when a lot of the pain comes in. And then how is it different when you're in the right projection field? When you're in the right projection field, <clears throat> and you're communicating well, you're following your own strategy, whatever that is. You're asked to step up and help out to serve in a way that's kind of like leading out of a crisis situation. Someone has got to say, okay, I know the way to the fire exit door. And um, the, the fifth line is who, because of our aura, um, that's who the crowd will look to. You know, the fifth lines, they're gonna know how to just step up and take charge. And if it's right for you, you do it and you find the fire exit door. Um, when it's the wrong projection field, you're in a place that people are not wanting to find the door. They're just not wanting to see what's, what's going on within themselves, the fire that's within themselves and they're not ready to fight it. So um, just following your own strategy will help you determine which way to go. I know that recently, I, like I said, I've been understanding my design on a whole new level and relating to it in a totally different way. And I, I'm a manifester, and so I'm designed to initiate. And I've been initiating more. And an interesting thing that I have been experiencing as something different as I've been following my strategy more, living my design more, being more actually a manifester, is I'm getting more acknowledgement back. Right? And so that's a sign to me that, oh, I'm in the right projection field, as opposed to doing things, uh, initiating things, saying things, and having people misunderstand or get offended. I've been getting more acknowledgement, appreciation, um, people basically confirming to me that I'm in the right place. And so that that projection field adjustment 
has been occurring and I'm noticing it occurring as I get more in alignment with who I am and my design. As a generator, I, I have the, to wait to have something to respond to. And that always makes me, you know, as a transpersonal karma, that I'm a fifth line, five one. So I learn in my life by bouncing off other people, other situations, something external outside of myself. Well, uh, and as a generator, I'm waiting from something outside of myself to respond to. When I'm in the wrong projection field, it just feels really bad. Everything comes back, feels out of alignment. It feels wrong. Um, it's, it's a yucky place to live. When I relax back and I, when I bounce off and wait for something to respond to that is correct for me, then I feel this peace inside. And learning how this fifth line works is really brought a peace within myself that is so luscious that I want to share. So it sounds like you're kind of starting to talk about what the purpose of the projection field and the fifth line are. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, the, the purpose, and I, you know, I've got that one tack behind that five, so I went back and I listened to every single one of Ra's uh, lectures um, that I could to get his perspectives, and then I went and I've read everything I could as far as the the uh, purpose of the, the fifth line. And I think, it, I think it's fairly simple. People need to be drawn to something that will show them the way when they need it. And our aura is just a, a little magnetic pull that, that we will have something that they need. So they are drawn when when they are needing us, they will come and they will ask. We'll do our best to give. And then when they don't need us, we can be off doing our own thing. And that purpose also is that they realize that as a fifth line, we have a way to universalize everything. We have a way of being able to explain things that it makes sense to others that all can use. Yeah, so what you're starting to talk about, Gayla, is that about the projection field going both ways, right? So what we were talking about in the beginning was about how people perceive us differently than who we are. And I think of that as they are projecting onto me who they think I am, what they think I'm going to do and say. But I also project onto other people who I think they're going to be what I think they're going to do and say. And as we're talking about the purpose of the fifth line and this universalizing piece, that's part of, so it's like I'm projecting out whatever it is that I'm, that I'm spreading. I'm helping other people see, recognize, benefit from. And so that's part of how I perceive that universalizing. And I know when I think about myself as being a fifth line, recognizing that universalizing piece is out there, it's like that's part of why I'm here. That's part of my purpose. And the fifth line, the projection field, is one of the things that I can look at as being one of my tools, part of how I'm here to make a contribution. And so it takes this aspect of myself that can be experienced as potentially challenging and choose to look at it. It's like, oh, I'm going to look at it this more positive way rather than seeing it all as a problem or something I don't like. Yeah. Well, you know, I was always kind of confused by, he says, well, you're universalized. Well, I had to go and look up, yeah, that one came in there too. Um, I had to go up and look up the definition of universalization. And, you know, they can't even describe it without using the word. And how can you define a word if you have to use the word to define the word? It doesn't make sense. But, you know, universal means it works for all. And whenever the time is right, whenever it's needed, we're able to bring out a concept, introduce a new, novel, innovative concept that will make sense 
or be able to be used by the masses. And so that is in ultimately what the whole purpose is. Now, why we have to go through all this crap to get to that point, I don't know. But <laughs> Well, so it's like when I'm doing readings, for human design readings for people, and I'm talking with them and helping them understand what this projection field is and this line five experience is, how I tell them in a way that is, you know, it's like simple and basic to understand is universalizing is helping other people benefit from something I have found is wonderful, right? So it's like, if I go to a great movie, I like to tell everybody, hey, you know, that's a really good movie, you should go see it, right? So it's like taking anything that is beneficial and helping other people benefit from it. Right. That's part of how I talk about it in a way that's just like super easy and da daily, like easy little things as well as big things. Yeah, I find that works only when I'm responding correctly because if I don't wait and I just blat out like a, <laughs> like a manifester, I get the, you know, I get the weirdest looks, especially like when I first learned human design, I thought the world needs to know this. And I started singing from the hilltops about human design. And I, I got shut down pretty quickly, you know, pretty effectively. And I realized I wasn't following the correct strategy for me. So um, when I am asked, um, it, this can go out. Um, I, can under, I can show people that human design and, and help them, whether they come from the Bible Belt South, where I live, to other parts of the world, no matter their culture, no matter what circumstances or stage in life. Um, so, I, you know, I'm appreciative of that. I don't have to have a certain niche of uh, people that I need to help. It's just wherever and whoever. Uh, so that I appreciate that about the fifth line. Yeah, you're making really clear what something that you were saying earlier about how you can be in the correct projection field. So it's like following the strategy and not just blurting out whatever, but actually making sure that people have agreed that they want that information. So it's like that makes it more likely that you're going to be in the right projection field. And so for people who are just kind of learning about this, you know, one way that you can see if, if you're in the wrong projection field is if you did just blurt something out, right, and the person across from you doesn't hear you or responds <laughs> negatively or doesn't like what you said or didn't understand, all of those are indications that you're in the wrong projection field. It doesn't mean you have to stay there, right? You can speak, it's fixable. Right, but just recognizing there's something then for you to go in and manage, something that there's for you to do to help you get back into the correct projection field. Mm -hmm. It is um, communication is very important. You know, open lines of communication are extremely important. That's another one of those practical strategies. Right? So again, when I'm doing readings for people and I'm helping them understand about the projection field and how they can learn how to manage it in their own life to understand that misunderstandings are going to happen. Right? Misunderstandings are going to happen. And communication, like Gail was said, is the way through. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, here's an example I, I give to people. If I'm asking someone to do something, right? I'm not sure, partially because of the projection field, if they actually really understand what it is I'm asking them for. So if I have them tell me back what it is I've asked them to do and what they're going to do, that makes it more likely that we're both on the same page, that we're both in agreement. So that's another practical strategy, you guys, that you can use to help manage the projection field. Because the possibility for having expectations be mismatched and not get expectations met is really high with the projection field. So communication making as clear as possible. Can I, can I jump in? I, yep. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt your flow. But I'm coming as a as a four six. Not I don't have the fifth line, although they're all in my family have fifth lines. So I have a question. Because you're talk on the projection field. You're talking because you said you got to get. Does the fifth line have the projection field around them all the time? 
is you what I what I'm hearing and this could be I'm not understanding is you're in the wrong projection you're in the wrong projection field well your projection field is always there you're in if it's coming out you might be in the wrong group of people that are utilizing your projection field is that is that correct or does do you move in and out of a projection field i'm trying can to wrap I, my <laughs> wrap my my end around what you guys were saying uh, can i address this from what i've learned um and this does stem back to the lectures by raw is that the two five is pretty much always in the projection field because of the projection field of the fifth line and also the projection field of the second line uh, this the second line the hermit can crawl in the cave and they think that they're hiding but actually everybody is projecting oh that they're learning all these wonderful stuff and why don't you come out and tell us all your good stuff and so they call the second line out he implied he never came out and said but he implied that that there is a rest time for the others that um, for the three five when they're off doing their experimental things it's when they bring out their findings that people project and for the transpersonal the five um, five ones uh, it's it's like whenever we're hiding uh, we get a rest from the projection field can you take from that Sandra, I've, I've kind of lost my train of thought there. I don't know. I mean, I'm just wondering the question. So it's like, I see, but I, this is me just guessing, that I am always projecting. I mean, always. And anyone who is interacting with me is seeing me, th is seeing through the projection. But to tell you the truth, I don't know if it's always there or not. But it's part of, okay, now I'm going to go back because it's, the projection for the fifth line is calling people through your aura, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. So these are people that need the universalizing. They might need something that they have to put outside themselves because they can't see it within themselves. So what they're going to do is they're going to project it. They, they feel your aura. They feel the fifth line aura. Oh, this person can handle it because you were saying, you have a universalizing energy. They might not know they can feel it, but they're attracted to it. And it's mm -hmm. like something, and now again, I'm a four six, so I'm going, coming at you. So, cause you have the experience. When they come at you, it's like, oh my gosh, I can, unconsciously they're going, data dump. <laughs> and. Yeah. And that way it's like, oh, look, now I can see it outside myself because when it's inside myself, I won't see it. Is that, am, am I, and there is a question um, on the Facebook group that it, I mean, I, I'll throw that and then I have a question on the Facebook group for you too. So did you understand kind of what I was saying? I, I, I had, a, I was struggling with it a little bit. Um, yeah, can I just throw out something to see if I'm, at, I'm beating down the right door? Oh, sure. <laughs> um, it's, it's like you if you think of the projection field, is every time you're looked at, someone's projecting onto you. Um, that, that is true in a way. Um, but the projection field is there to draw the people that uh, needs something that you have, uh, that these people don't always want uh, the savior or the general to, to lead them into crisis or out of the crisis. So there's times that you're not pulling these people to you. Uh, I think that as a 5-1, I get to rest um, outside of the projection field, and that's part of the reason I, I hide. Um, and and going back to something you said earlier, um, Sandra, that that I know that I'm doing better in the projection field is when I'm not feeling that desire to hide as much. But that I think you're asking, um, Cindy, if 
We're constantly projecting, so therefore we're constantly isolated behind this projection field. I don't know that for sure. I don't, I don't know that for sure. I've... Yeah, okay. I think this is on the language, and Sandra had brought that up again. I'm not sure, okay, if I was going to rephrase, rephrase what you said, I'm not saying you're always projecting. I think that the people that are attracted to your aura, you know, people are coming and they, they could even be just walking by and it's like something in, and then all of a sudden, so it's your aura and it's around you and then all of a sudden you could get the data dump or you could get data dump is a nice way of saying some of this stuff that you might get but you could also get someone like me that's saying oh okay I need let me project this out and see if this rings true on what it's doing so maybe this will I mean here's some of the comments that have come on, on the Facebook group um, and it kind of goes to the same thing Sharon says well people with people who are in our lives in long-term relationships, do they also constantly project? Or can they see us for who we are? Well, I truly believe that the projection field works even in the close relationships, which is an isolating feeling at first. But when you realize that, that um, when you realize that you're just working within, doing the best you can to be the best, the, living to the highest extent of your um, soul's design, um, that it is what it is. And that they do see, I cannot totally agree. My circle will not let me say that, that no one can at all see us for who we are. Because I... You see the fruits of, of somebody's uh, works. You know, if we were crappy people and he's projecting on to me that I was a, a wonderful person, he would see the results of that. I would be a crappy person to him, and he would figure it out fast enough. Um, so there is a, a piece to they can't see us for who we are, but we're not totally hidden. Therefore, we're not totally unable to have close relationships like sometimes I have read or heard things in the past from Ra that, we're, that if there's one thing that Ra said is that we seduce people into believing different ideas. Well, I don't really like that word seduce. It's too uh, charged. Um, I think, you know, entice or something else, we, we're here to draw them to, to become open to a new idea. But um, as far as, as never getting out of that projection field, as people seeing us for who we are to some extent, I think that that's, that's not a total, um, that's not a total, it's never going to happen thing. But that might be something with the tools you guys are going to teach in, in your class that you're going to have. They might get more information on that. Um, Deanna said on Facebook that the projection field possibly right from birth, especially the unhealed mothers. Like, what it, I had a, my daughter's a 3-5. <laughs> and right from birth, so now I'm thinking, Oh my, so was I projecting on my daughter <laughs> right from birth? That, yeah, and that is true. A lot of times with three fives, parents will say, well, my, my kid is going to be able to do X, Y, Z because there's so, so such potential for this kid to do these wonderful things. And they will put that expectation on them. And then when the kid experiments and something doesn't go right, they go, <laughs> I just knew you could do X, Y, Z and, and shame the kid for making the mistake. Oh, hang it. Um, okay, so there was a couple comments that came in on, in Zoom there. Anita said, I'm a 5-1 projector. Uh -huh. Thoughts, comments, does it, does the, and 
right now we have a generator and a manifest your generator and a manifester. Does the fifth line, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm rephrasing your question. Does the type make a difference with the fifth line, having a fifth line? I think every aspect of the human design chart does make um, a difference. Uh, whether, you know, the type. The type of a projector is a lot like the type of a generator. We are supposed to wait. I wait till something to respond to. The uh, projector waits for the uh, invitation. But once the projector has the invitation, once the generator has the, something to respond to, we can all act like that manifester over there. <laughs> And we can just give what we need to do. And then when we're the job is done, we step back. Not an interesting one. Okay, um, common question came up on Facebook. Lazarinka says, both my partner and I are five ones. How do we cope with the projections to one another? How can we be more realistic about who we are without the projection field? Thank you. My best friends have always been three fives. <laughs> just seems like we can just relax. <laughs> you know, when you, when you realize that you're probably projecting on each other, then you just relax and just project away. You just don't take it personally. <laughs> Here's what I say, that really the projection field is part of who we are. Yeah. So... You know, I may have the experience that I'm not seen and that I'm not understood, but the truth is that part of who I am is, has the projection field, right? Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, my, my, my husband also has a, has a line five. We're both three fives. And it's like, it's just part of the dance of the relationship. And once I'm more conscious about how to manage it, to work with it, then it, it you know, really stops being a, a challenge or a problem so um, it's like the two of you get to play together and explore what that five oneness is like and just learn how to communicate with each other so that as much as possible everything works and you feel like you're understood and seen I really like that Sandra I, I, um, I also wanted to speak to something that that you read off, um, Cindy was talking about the other parts of the like types that would uh, factor in. There's, there's, there's so much that we need to understand about our human design um, with, with like having an open G or an open will when you have, when you're behind a projection field, when people are projecting onto you, then you go, oh, is this who I am? Or is this my value when they when they either value me or don't value me. When I use something external to define who I am as a person or my value as a person, it's very unsettling. And um, just understanding my own design. And, and with a person who's very sensitive, can be very sensitive to the pains of the projection field. If you just realize that and learn your own coping mechanisms, uh, it just makes life so much simpler. Just like anything in human design, when you understand that it's part of your design, right? you are able to become peaceful about it and learn how to manage it. Yeah, it is what it is. Yep. And it's not, you can't turn it off, right? Mm -hmm. We can't turn it off. So might as well make the most of what we've got. Okay. Um, there's a couple more questions. I, I'm, okay. Did you did you two have something else to share before I give you more questions, or because I want to make sure that you share all your all the information, have enough time that you can share all the information you wanted to share with us before we go. We're going to talk a little bit about the workshop, and then we want to do a little bit of general tapping for everybody for all of the fifth lines at the end. So how about two more questions? Okay. <laughs> So that you have time to talk about, is that, is that good? Okay, Sharon on Facebook says um, the same question about uh, her. She's a 5-1 emotional manifester, and her husband is a 3-5 manifesting generator. So is there, would the same thing work for them as you're saying, you know, realizing 
because now you've got the fifth line is one's conscious, one's unconscious, <laughs> and you got the. I mean, is there a difference in way that way people are doing? Uh, or get, can you say, yes, the same thing when you realize that the projection field is both there, then you both can. I know, Sandra, I always like how you can, and just breathe. That's one of the things Sandra has in a lot of the things. She's like, take a deep breath and let it go. But I don't know. If it, I, I'm, we're waiting for, you, waiting for your response. Can, can I say something? I have a 5'1 um, daughter-in-law, and we, so we project on each other. Uh, five ones, you know, five fifth lines project on other fifth lines, just like anyone else does. And when I'm with my five one um, daughter-in-law, who has an open G and has the sensitivity to the hilt, uh, it can be very hard for her to be within the projection field. And I, that's when I was talking about the communication. It's so key. Uh, she. Um, when I'm in an interaction with her and she was feeling very tight and, and I could feel the tension in her body. And I said, um, hey, are you thinking I'm thinking something bad about you? And she said, well, I thought you was mad at me because X, Y, Z. I said, well, it didn't really occur to me to be <laughs> mad at you about that. And she goes, oh, so this just where the good communication comes in. When you cannot be afraid to ask, are you thinking something bad right now? It makes such a big difference. And a lot of times people um, are bothered by something or confused or, and they're afraid to say something. Mm -hmm. So it's like, just like you said, you're being willing to, to breach that gap and start a comment. It's like, are you feeling uncomfortable here, right? Mm -hmm. Enables everybody to let it out and um, be peaceful about it and work with it. So here's, here's a circumstance that happens for me all the time. And I recognize it and I learn how to manage it. So it's like, if I feel like the person feels like I'm pressuring them, right? I verbally retract the pressure, knowing that there's the potential for that. So it happens all the time, like an email even, right? I'm writing an email explaining something to somebody, and it's feeling to me their responses, or even just energetically, that they might feel like I'm putting pressure on them, right? And so just to clarify it all, it's like, oh, I verbally withdraw the pressure, right? So it's like I ask, I ask them, you know, is there something about this that is making you uncomfortable or whatever, so that they don't have to stay uncomfortable or they don't have to reach out and start the conversation themselves. It's usually me that's going to start the conversation. Now, I'm the manifester, so, you know, starting that conversation is part of my design as well. But recognizing the whole projection field thing is there that could be muddying the waters and contributing to confusion and contributing to unfulfilled expectations and all kinds of upset, my default is to just communicate so that everybody is able to be feel like they're able to be okay and be heard. And I'd like to share something that I have learned. When I'm out in the world, I'm in the projection field, people will look at me and they think something. I have no control over what they think. So I find myself really watching, engaging. What if they're thinking this or thinking that and preparing myself for all of what they might want from me, what they're thinking about me, I can't control that. And to realize your fifth line um, blessing is to step back and realize that, that it doesn't affect me what they think. And that, um, that I can be in my fifth line in the correct projection field and just relax and stop trying to worry what people are thinking about me. With, and like I'm going back to my daughter-in-law, if she, if I had to worry what she's thinking, I'm thinking she's thinking, I'm thinking she's thinking. We'd go into endless loop of <laughs> we would never talk to each other again. So we just have to keep our lines of communication open. 
and not and take it personally. Are you thinking I'm thinking something bad about you? Yes, and I hate you for it. You know, you have to be willing to accept that. <laughs> there was another question, Cindy. Um, there was, and it was from a straight a Staris. Uh, she says, is there a difference or have you seen a difference in whether the fifth line is like 5-1 or 5-2 in the conscious or the unconscious, the 3-5? The you, have you seen a difference in that? Or do you feel there's a difference on the way that they might perceive it? Yes, we do. And that's what we would like to go into in the workshop is to really explain um, what we are learning and what is coming um, into our, our awareness about this. And because of that, how we all don't need just one magic pill. There's no magic pill that's going to fix this. How we all need to, to work from our perspective, uh, whether it's conscious, unconscious, you know, the three, five, the two, five, five, one, five, two. We all need to work from our own personal perspective and how it's affecting us. And you, and you realize all our conditioning, whatever has gone on, also plays into how you're going to need to make peace with your fifth line. So we're going to spend a lot of time with that in the workshop. Helping, this is people, understand, helping people understand the differences between the different profiles and practical strategies for how to work with a whole variety of different things. What were you saying, Cindy? I was going to say, that's a great segue if you want to tell them what's a little bit more about your workshop before you, you want to end with tapping. So I, I do have the link. If it's the link you sent to me, I can post that both on Zoom and on, on the Facebook. So great. You segue great into that, Sandra and, and Gaila. Good job. Sandra, you take this one. Well, we've already really kind of explained what we're, what we're going to talk about. Well, we don't um, know the times and the amount of time per workshop, that sort of thing. Oh, okay. So we are on Wednesday the 10th, I think, Wednesday the 10th of April, and then Wednesday the 17th of April. We've got um, 7.30 to 9 Central Time, right? Yes, 90 minutes. Yeah. So those two days. And um, we'll go in, in depth and we'll have a lot of time for questions and, you know, particular situations that people have they're struggling with. But um, and just... And it will be recorded. Yes. I am just now starting to really recognize how different the four profiles with the Line 5 are. Like, I, that was just not part of my awareness that they are so different, but they really are. I mean, just yesterday, Gail and I were talking about preparing for this and just becoming really clear how different our life experiences of the projection field and the line five are. And so I'm really excited to learn more about that, to dive in and to help other people to understand that we are so different in how we experience this. Right. We, we want to challenge that concept that, that being a fifth line is a curse. Ah. It's really not. It is a superpower gift. It's a blessing. And I know for me, just changing my perspective from looking at it as a problem that I have to deal with to, oh, here I'm, I'm making my contribution. This is part of how I give my gift. Just that little adjustment in perspective, looking for how is this contributing, it has made all the difference in the world to me. My relationship to the projection field is entirely different than it was even a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's outstanding. So they have the link both in the Zoom chat and on, on the Facebook comments. And you wanted to... You've got about nine, nine, ten minutes left, and I understand you wanted to do a tapping session. Yeah, let's say one more thing about the workshop. We're going to go into um, the three five and the two five first on the on the first Wednesday, and we're going to do you know a little bit more explanation, a little bit more teaching, but we also want to do some tapping. 
um, and to see if we can, you know, help pull out some of these uh, these painful issues and if we can just redirect them. Let's rewrite these stories. Let's take all this pain of the past and make it into something better for our future. Yay. Superpowers. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, anything else? Or start doing some tapping? Yes. Okay. So um, just follow along. We're going to be demonstrating. So you guys, if you don't know EFT, you can just follow along. So we're going to start off by tapping the side of the hand here. So even though no one really sees me for who I am, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though no one sees me for who I really am, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though no one really sees me for who I am, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though no one really sees me for who I am, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though no one really sees me for who I am. Even though no one really sees me for who I am. And that's upsetting to me. And that's upsetting to me. I want people to see me. I want people to see me. I want people to like me. I want people to like me. I want people to appreciate me. I want people to appreciate me. And sometimes it feels like they don't. And sometimes it feels like they definitely don't. And I really don't like that. I really don't like that. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So even though no one sees me for who I am. Well, even though no one sees me for who I am. And sometimes I feel powerless. And sometimes I feel powerless in that. At being able to do anything about that. And in, in being able to do anything about that. That's something that I have to deal with. That's something I have to deal with. Every day. Every day. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though it's not okay for me to be myself in the world. Even though it's not okay for me to be myself in the world. Because I feel like I'm just going to be misunderstood. Because I feel like I'm going to be misunderstood. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though it feels like it's not safe. Even though it feels like it's not safe. To be myself in the world. To be myself in the world. Because I'm just going to be misunderstood. I'm just going to be misunderstood anyway. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I'm a line five. I'm a line five. I have the projection field. I have this projection field around me. It's with me forever. It's with me forever. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. 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 Exactly the way I am. Exactly the way I am. <laughs> and I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though people don't see me for who I am. Even though people don't see me for who I am. I can learn how to manage that. I can learn how to manage that. I can communicate. I can communicate. Even just the perspective I take. Even just the perspective I take. On what's going on. And what's going on. Makes things easier. Makes things easier. I understand because of the projection field. I understand just because of the projection field. But that's why people are the way they are with me. That's why people are the way they are with me. And I can manage that. And I can manage that. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So even though no one really sees me for who I am. So even though no one really sees me for who I am. I can live with that. I can live with that. I can manage that. I can manage that. And be myself in the world. And be myself in the world. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though no one sees me for who I am. Even though no one sees me for who I am. I still have really valuable things to share. I have really valuable things to share. I have important contributions to make. I have important contributions to make. And I can do that. And I can do that. And be received. And be received. 
and loved for who I am. And loved for who I am. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Top of the head, I can be loved for who I am. I can be loved for who I am. Over the eyes, even if there's a projection field. Even if there's a projection field. Side of the eyes, I can work with the projection field. I can work with the projection field. Under the eyes, I've been doing it my whole life. I've been doing it my whole life. Under the nose, I can be seen. I can be seen and loved. Can and received. And received and loved. Collarbone and loved. And loved. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Well, you have some wonderful comments on Facebook. Sharon shares, y'all made me, cr making me cry. <laughs> She's shedding tears too. It feels good. Well, the um, fifth lines, we're, we're so much about hiding that it feels good for someone to actually recognize the fifth line. And um, just wrapping up, I said yes, but I guess maybe I was projecting on you guys. Um, Anita said, this class is fantastic. I can't wait for the classes. Can I share this with fifth lines who don't necessarily have a strong human design background? I, Absolutely. So you do not have to have a strong human design background. No. Very good. Martha says beautiful. Thank you both so much. Yay! Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming. We look and, forward to seeing you in the workshop. And, maybe and it will be recorded. It, the workshop, this is also recorded. That was one of the questions. And will you guys go back onto the Facebook page and maybe you might want to read some of the comments. I'm just suggesting okay. they're, they're very nice comments and questions. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all, and again, the link is in the chat. It'll be on the replay, and there'll be a replay email tomorrow. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Gayla. Thank you, everybody. Bye.